Hi folks, this is John with Remodeling Wizards of Maryland, and I'm here today to answer a question. If you take a look at our Facebook group, we do have a new series called Ask the Contractor. Anyway, I did have a question that came in. It came in from Jenny S. And it says here that I want to remodel my master bathroom. What things should I consider before contacting a remodeling company? That's a great question, Jenny. And I appreciate you sending it out. Um, this is what I usually look at when I'm looking at a bathroom design or a bathroom remodeling project. I start with the floor and then work my way up. One of the things when we're talking about the floor in your bathroom is what type of floor do you have now? And what type of floor would you like to have in the future? There's a couple options here. You may want to put a tile floor down. And if you do, there's porcelain tile, ceramic tile, there is a natural stone. Uh, if we get into a natural stone, one thing you need to think about is that uh, typically a natural stone needs to be, it needs to get sealed during the install process. Just takes a few extra steps and it's, it's going to end up costing a little bit more money than if you just put a basic porcelain tile down. The other thing is the pattern. Typically, a uh, contractor uses a stagger pattern. It looks like a brick pattern or even a block pattern where the tile is just stacked in a row. Uh, but there's other things, too, that you can do. And as you look at patterns, again, the patterns, the more complicated they get, the more expensive it would be for the labor to do the job. And lots of times it's even more expensive for the materials because patterns can increase the amount of waste. But getting outside of the cost thing, let's talk about some options. You have the tile option. The other thing that's very popular right now is luxury vinyl. You can buy a luxury vinyl plank. It looks like a board. And uh, it's a product that uh, is all vinyl, so it's waterproof. And you end up uh, uh, snapping it together and, and folding it and putting it in place. It doesn't take any thin set or anything to hold it down. It basically lays on your floor. It's all measured to fit, and it's, it's what we call a floating floor. But that is an option. That, that option is typically uh, less expensive than going with a ceramic or porcelain tile. In addition to the luxury vinyl planks, um, they also have luxury vinyl tiles. So you can get a luxury vinyl that's going to look like tile. So there are a couple things you want to consider. The other thing is um, when you're looking at the floor, you want to think about what type of baseboard do I want? Now, with all of these floors, you can just use a wood baseboard. It could be a paint grade baseboard or stain grade baseboard. Um, but in addition to that, you might want to uh, consider getting a tile baseboard. And so uh, that's another option. Again, the wood, when you jump from wood to tile, it's going to cost more. The next thing that you want to look at when you're considering a bathroom project is what type of toilet do you want? Now, most people today we're finding are asking for the higher toilets. It's an ADA toilet or comfort height toilet, universal toilet, uh, has all these various names that, that depends on who the manufacturer is. That's the name that, uh, that you'll see. But basically, that's a toilet that's a little taller than the standard toilet that, you, that we used to put in back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, not a whole lot tall, taller. It's not going to be six inches taller, but it's going to be about two inches taller than what, you, than what the older toilets had. And, uh, and actually, uh, those two inches make a big difference when you are uh, on, on your knees. Let me just say that when you're getting up and down off the toilet. Uh, the other thing about a toilet is you'll hear the term a round bowl or elongated bowl. bowl. Um, the round bowl, bowls are, again, I, I, I really see them as being a little more old-fashioned. They're not as popular today because the people, most people want a, a bigger uh, toilet. So it's an elongated toilet, more like an oval shape. Um, the, but there is a uh, time and place for the round toilets. And if you don't have a lot of space in your bathroom, you might want to go with a round toilet because the round toilets uh, can can be a little smaller so that if you're in a real narrow room, it'll give you a little more walking space in front of the toilet. When we get outside of the toilet, the next thing that you want to consider is your vanity. You might want to go with a pedestal. A pedestal, the downside of the pedestal is that there's no storage underneath it. So if you want the storage, you're going to want to get a, a, a vanity 
um, either a full vanity that goes all the way down to the ground, just like your kitchen cabinet, for example, or you might want to get something that, that that's very popular today, and that's the vanity with legs on the bottom, so that you can actually look underneath, just like you can on a piece of furniture. Um, the thing that you want to consider, though, if you get them up the legs, when you do the tile floor, the tile floor definitely has to go all the way under the vanity. And to be honest with you, uh, typically when we do a tile floor, we we put the tile down first and set the vanity on top of it. The only time that we don't do that is if we use luxury vinyl, then we would butt it to the vanity because the luxury vinyl is a floating floor and you want to give it a little bit of wiggle room so that it can expand and contract, uh, you know, depending on temperature and moisture and so on. The next thing that you want to consider is your accessories. Do you want a mirror, just a flat mirror, or do you want something that has a medicine cabinet? Um, if you do want something with a medicine cabinet, and you have the option of to flush mount it, where it will actually stick out a little bit from the wall, maybe three and a half inches out from the wall, take up a little bit of space above your vanity. Or you may say, I'd rather have it recessed into the wall so that it's nice and flush and gives me a little extra space above the vanity for storing things. One of the things you need to consider is that um, many times when you cut open a hole to set that vanity in above your sink, the contractor notices that there's a pipe in there going up, up to the roof. Of course, you're wondering, well, why would there be a pipe going up to the roof? Well, believe it or not, it's the drain pipe. Um, it, it, the drain pipe goes in two directions. One direction is down. That's where all the, all the water goes. And, uh, but at the same time, there's a need for a vent so that there's not a vacuum uh, in the drain system so that the water flows easily. But that vent has to go up and out through the roof. So the reason I'm bringing that up is now you cut this hole and you, now you see this vent. Well, if you want to put a recessed vanity cabinet in, that vent's going to have to be rerouted. And of course, now again, we have some additional costs. So just something to think about. What we do lots of times with people is um, when they're considering putting in a uh, recessed vanity, um, we basically do some exploratory work. We cut a hole and we take a look in there and see if there's any pipes or wires or something that might be in the way. So just something to consider. Let's talk about vanity lights. A couple of things you can do. You can get a vanity light that just sits right above the vanity. Uh, if you have a light there now, the least expensive thing to do is to take that one off and put a new one on versus running some new wire somewhere. Um, but you have some other options. Uh, you may want to have wall sconces where you have a light on either side of the medicine cabinet or you might have a medicine cabinet with a built-in light. Uh, the other option is, well, I have all mirror and I don't have any space. Well, then you can do a recessed light up in the ceiling. So these are things to consider when you're talking about lighting. Let's talk about the tub and the shower. Uh, most people, especially in older homes, you have a five-foot tub-shower combo. You either take a, a, a bath or you can take a shower. I find that most people take showers and, and very few people seem to take baths. Um, so that's something to think about, especially if you're in a master bathroom um, to uh, you could actually take the tub out and convert it into a shower. Uh, we do that all of the time. Um, it's a pretty easy conversion. But of course, anytime you change something, it costs more than if you kept things alike. Um, but uh, if you want to do that, uh, it, the tub would come out and uh, a faucet and all the uh, drains and so on, all that would be disconnected. And then a shower would be put in place with a, a valve that's higher up on the wall than what it is for a tub. The other thing in the, uh, if you want to keep the tub, uh, that's, that's okay too. And now you need to consider what type of tub do you want. Um, right now, what's pretty uh, popular is the fiberglass or the acrylic tub. The acrylic tub uh, seems to last uh, longer than, let's say, a, a basic fiberglass tub just because the coating's a little heavier on it. Um, some people don't like acrylic or even fiberglass because they're concerned that it might have some bounce in it when you're walking. And it could, depending on the uh, manufacturer and, and how well it's built, but the other thing, too, is um, it also depends on how it's installed. A good installer would put uh, 
uh, a base underneath the uh, fiberglass tub so that it will sit down into a solid uh, area so that it doesn't have any bounce at all. Um, they still have cast iron tubs. They're, they're real heavy, a little harder to get right now. Uh, the other option is to go with a steel tub. It's all steel. It has an enamel on it, and it looks like the old-fashioned cast iron tubs. So there's some options with tubs. We talked about converting to a shower. Some of the things you want to think about on the shower is do you want a bench in there? If you don't want a bench, do you want a seat? You can get a folding seat. A lot of these folding seats, you can buy them online for about $300. Uh, they're made out of teak wood, and uh, they, they fold up and stay in position, and when you want to use them, you fold them down. Um, so there's a lot of options with seats. The other thing is the niche, a uh, place to put your shampoo and your soap. And there's all sizes of niches. A typical one is about 16 by 16, but um, we put them in where they're uh, 48 inches across and, and maybe 16 inches high. So you can store a lot of things in the shower. But think about it. If you're going to do that, um, you might not want to have this beautiful shower looking like it's cluttered up because you have this niche in the center. It's just full of things. Uh, one of the tricks that we've been using lately is uh, we take the niche and we put it under a bench so that when you're standing and looking through the glass doors and you see the back wall of the shower, it looks beautiful. And then right under the seat, maybe to the left or to the right, is where the niche is, and that's where things are stored. So it get, keeps it out of sight. Um, the other thing is, let's talk about plumbing fixtures. One of the first things that, that you want to think about is um, what type of fixture? Am I going to use chrome, brushed nickel, uh, an antique bronze, a black? And once you decide what that fixture color is going to be, let's keep it consistent in the bathroom. So the vanity and the towel bars and the towel rings, everything has the same uh, uh, finish on it. Even your um, shower door, if you have a semi frameless glass door that has a, a bar that goes across the top of it, you want, if you're using chrome as you're in your uh, handheld and your shower head, you want to make sure that, that that bar is also done in chrome. So anyway, there's some tips on things that you have to look at. There's a lot of things to look at in the bathroom. It's, it's like building a house It's because you have plumbing and you have uh, uh, electric involved and tile and paint and so on. So there's lots of things to think about. But Jenny, I appreciate you sending the uh, question out. And uh, if you have any questions, just give us a call or shoot us a quick email and uh, I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again. And if anybody else has any questions, just send them out to us. Thank you.